Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Today we'll be talking about critical raw materials and how the EU plans to ensure security of supply and cut unwanted dependencies from third countries. Want to know more? Keep listening. Bauxite, graphite, strontium. You may never have heard about them before, but these raw materials will play a big role in the green and digital transitions Europe has embarked on. Without them, we simply wouldn't have smartphones, TV and computer screens, electric cars, wind turbines and many other products and applications that make our everyday life easier and more comfortable. And COVID-19 has painfully showed how dependent we are on just such technological products. So, where's the problem? Well, the problem is, if Europe is serious about becoming the first climate-neutral continent by 2050 and the most digitally advanced, it needs to radically change its approach to raw materials. And this is the reason why. Let's hear Commissioner Thierry Breton in charge of the EU's internal market. The digital and green transitions will require a lot of critical raw materials. They will require batteries as well as magnets, and magnets are rare earths. We will also need semiconductors, and these are also critical materials. The EU has identified 30 critical raw materials of high importance for clean and future-oriented industries, such as environmental technologies, consumer electronics, health, defence, space exploration and aviation. These materials are not only economically and strategically important for the European economy and the development of key technologies that could propel the EU to digital and defence sovereignty, they also hold the key to Europe becoming a stronger geopolitical player. But here's the downside. They come with high risk associated with their supply. Indeed, certain critical raw materials such as hafnium and strontium are produced in the EU. But in most cases, the EU relies on imports from foreign countries with often much lower environmental and social standards, less freedoms or unstable economies. And let's not forget that some of these countries, like China, are also undergoing digital transitions, so they will save their raw materials for their own industry. Currently, China provides 98% of the EU's supply of rare earth elements. Turkey, 98% of the borate. South Africa provides 71% of the EU's needs for platinum. And Brazil, 85% of its niobium, which is used in jet engines. And demand is only expected to grow. Let's hear Commissioner for Foresight and Interinstitutional Relations, Maros Shevchovic. Europe will need almost 60 times more lithium and 15 times more cobalt by 2050 for electric cars and uh, energy storage alone. Demand for rare earths used in permanent magnets, uh, critical for products like wind generators, could increase tenfold in the same period. So, what is the EU going to do about this? Stay with us. While secure access to critical raw materials has been on the EU agenda for many years, the current Commission has made it one of the major priorities of its mandate. In September 2020, it launched a new action plan that tackles access to critical raw materials from many different angles, from developing resilient value chains for the European industry to supporting sustainable mining and processing of raw materials in the EU extraction reducing dependency through circular use of resources, sustainable products and innovation, and diversifying supply with responsible sourcing from third countries. A very concrete result of this new action plan is the European Raw Materials Alliance, launched in October 2020. But what's the idea behind it? Here's Commissioner Shevchevic. The Raw Materials Alliance will mobilise industrial and innovation actors, member states, regions, the EIB, investors, social partners and civil society in order to help build our capacities along the entire value chains, from mining uh, to waste recovery. But in order to secure access to critical raw materials and other advanced materials, closing the gaps in existing supply chains is only part of the solution. Indeed, this is why the EU is also determined to boost the development of domestic technologies, capabilities and skills. Now, to increase domestic sourcing of these materials and cut dependency from third countries, the EU will also invest in research and innovation to improve the sustainable use of resources, focusing on waste processing, substitution of critical with non-critical materials and developing other advanced materials. For example, plans to develop lithium mining and refining capacity on European territory are being accelerated as part of a concerted push 
to develop a strategic value chain for manufacturing electric car batteries inside Europe. Does this point to a revival of mining in Europe? Well, it is certainly an interesting opportunity to revisit the potential of transforming coal and carbon intensive areas into extracting areas for critical raw materials, while minimizing their impact on the climate and the environment. However, as domestic sourcing, even if it increases, won't cover Europe's future needs, the European Union will seek to forge strategic partnerships with third countries, offering rich resources to ensure diversified and secure access to global markets. These partnerships will cover the extraction, processing and refining of critical raw materials, while promoting values such as good governance, environmental protection and sustainability, and respect of basic human, social and labour rights. The EU also plans to use its external financial instruments, such as development cooperation and neighbourhood funding, to leverage private investment and create a level playing field for European companies to participate in foreign projects. The European Parliament has been a long-standing supporter of boosting critical raw material value chains to ensure the security of supply and weaken unwanted dependencies. But will the EU be able to achieve this? That remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, the coronavirus pandemic has not only put the resilience of global supply chains in the spotlight, it has also accelerated the quest for more autonomy in securing the critical raw materials necessary for a successful recovery from this crisis, based on the twin transitions to a greener and more digital Europe. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening. <laughs>